Have you ever wanted to bring an idea to life and turn it into a source of income? What if I told you that you could build a fully functional web app in under 60 minutes without writing a single line of code? Sounds unbelievable, right? I'll prove it's possible and show you how you can do the same using three insane AI tools with no coding experience needed. Here is how we'll break the video down. In step one, we are setting up the project with a free AI tool I've made. In step two, we will build the web app using Windsurf since it's cheaper and way easier to use than Cursor. And finally, in step three, we will deploy the web app online with a domain. And later in the video, I will show you how to set up Stripe for accepting payments. This is the only tutorial you'll ever need. So let's dive in. First things first, let's set up the web app. Starting a new project is so frustrating, especially if you're a beginner. If you just do one small mistake, you're suddenly stuck fixing problems for hours instead of actually building anything. And trust me, I know exactly how that feels. Because just a few months ago, I was in the same position, figuring out how to code with AI myself. So I built a free tool that takes care of the entire setup, so you can skip all the unnecessary headaches and start building instantly. And this is actually the exact web app we are going to build in this video. So now step one is to generate the project blueprint. Go to the first link in the description to open the brain dumper tool. And here all you do is just type out every single detail of your app idea. And don't worry about the structure, just get everything brain dumped. The more details you write down, the better the AI can generate an optimized project blueprint for you. Then we must select web app or mobile app before generating the prompt. Since we're building a web app in this video, we'll choose that. The AI will then analyze your input and generate a complete project context, including the best text stack, optimized project structure, and a full overview of the idea. So, now we can download the context file it just generated, and if we press continue, it will open the Windsurf download page, Node.js download page, and mob it. Now for step two, we need to set up Windsurf. And here's why we're using Windsurf instead of Cursor. Windsurf actually makes the setup smooth and effortless, whilst Cursor just throws code at you with little context, so you end up lost in errors, wrong folders, and having to debug for hours. It's frustrating. Windsurf, on the other hand, takes care of everything, setting up files properly, installing dependencies, and structuring your project so it runs perfectly. It makes it easy to track what the AI is actually doing, so you're always in control. Windsurf gives you five free AI prompts before requiring an upgrade, but Windsurf's pro plan is even cheaper than Cursor's. So now let's continue. On the Windsurf page, download Windsurf if you haven't already. I'll just speed up the downloading process for you, and when you're finished downloading Windsurf, open it and click Get Started. If you've used Cursor or VS Code before, import your settings. If not, just click Start Fresh, choose Key Bindings, Default is fine, and pick a theme. I prefer the dark mode, but as long as you don't choose the light mode, it's fine by me. Then sign up for Windsurf, and once your account is created, click Open Windsurf, and it will log you in automatically. In step 3, install Node.js, which is required for running the project. If you don't have it yet, head to nodejs.org and download the latest version. In short words, Node.js lets you run your web app, install necessary tools, and more complex complicated stuff we don't need to know about. Once it's installed, open your terminal, search for CMD, then type node-v and hit enter. If you see a version number appear, you're all set. Step 4, we will create the actual project. Let's click open folder and navigate to a place you want to save your project. Now just create a new folder and name it whatever you want. I'll call it brain dumper and then open it. Click yes, I trust the authors. Now let's create a docs folder and let's add the context file. If we now press control L, this will open the AI chat interface. Interface. This is called Cascade in Windsurf, which is basically the same as Cursor's Composer. Inside Cascade, if we press Control period, it will switch between chat mode for talking to the AI and write mode where the AI generates the code for you. So now let's type in build the entire app from the context of this file at context.md. But before we press enter, we need to make sure our web app actually will look good from the start. Mobin gives us instant access to entire user flows from the world's biggest companies, including premium features, onboarding sequences, and hidden paywalls that you would need to spend hours to see otherwise. These companies have spent millions perfecting their UI UX design, and we can just copy the best designs from Mobin and paste them straight into Windsor. This is exactly how the smartest developers work in 2025, by focusing only on building the software and just using UI that's already proven to work. And with Mobin Pro, you get unlimited access to all apps and websites, full user flows, and app histories. If you're serious about building an app that people actually want to use, 
this is the only tool you need. Now, let's head to web. Here they've added applications, specific screens, marketing pages, UI elements, and flows. And you can even filter by category, but I like to use the search function which searches through their entire database of designs. And I think Revolut's website looks amazing. So I'll search for that one, then click the screen and hit copy. Back in Windsurf, we simply paste in the design, and you can add as many screenshots as you want. Now, let's also include this line to make sure Windsurf understands what the screenshot is for. I added a screenshot of a website I want you to take inspiration from for the UI design. Then let's hit enter. And because Windsurf is way more careful than Cursor, you'll notice it actually thinks through what it's building and always asks for permission before running commands. And since it carefully manages every step, it doesn't accidentally destroy the entire code base like Cursor would do. Now Windsurf wants us to build the project. So let's click accept and this will automatically open a terminal in the background that runs the command to set up the project. Then we need to open the terminal that Windsurf just created. Since keyboard shortcuts can vary depending on your layout, let's hit Control shift p Here, search for Open Keyboard Shortcuts and select the option without JSON. This will show all your keybinds, so if you want to change any shortcuts, feel free to pause the video and do it now. Then, let's figure out how to open the terminal. Search for Terminal and look for View Toggle Terminal. For me, it's set to this because I'm using a Norwegian keyboard, but yours will of course be different. So remember what keybind it is and close out of the Settings tab. Let's press that shortcut on our keyboard to open the terminal that's already running. And in this terminal, we can see that Cascade has already run the command to set up the project automatically. Now we're prompted to choose how to set up the project. Just continue pressing enter for all of these as they are already chosen correctly. Now he will continue running the command to build the project. I recommend to try read what Cascade is actually doing to learn and to keep track of if it does something wrong. All right, now he is done setting up the project. So then Cascade wants us to accept the commands to install ShadCN, which is a UI library of reusable components. But there was an error. In Cursor, we'd have to copy and paste the error into the composer to fix the problem. But Windsurf literally thinks for himself, hmm, okay, here something went wrong. Ah, I see the problem, and then he actually corrects himself. The issue was that the command had the wrong syntax in the terminal, so Windsurf adjusted it automatically. Now, if we accept the fix, it runs smoothly. ShadCN is now downloading perfectly. And once that's done, it asks us to run one more command to finalize the ShadCN setup. So let's accept that too. And then also accept this command to actually install ShadCN. Boom! The project is set up, and now Cascade will move on to building the actual web app. You can already see it generating the landing page here. And they also mentioned here that Cascade will not create files that already exist. And this is so good because it won't duplicate any files like Cursor loves to do. Now the AI is just making the readme file. And finally Cascade will ask us if we want to change directory into the new project folder. And here he will also do npm run dev, which is the command to run the website locally to test how it looks in the web browser. So press accept and then let's hit control left click on the URL to open the page in the browser. Now this is the first draft. It looks like Windsurf didn't really take inspiration from the Revolut screenshot we provided earlier. No problem. Let's head back to Mobin, copy the screenshot again, and paste it into Windsurf. This time, we'll be more specific and prompt it to create the UI design based on the image. Just like it's doing here, you can actually see the AI thinking. It analyzed the screenshot, noticed floating app icons, and is now applying the same elements to our website. Once it's done, let's click accept and head back to the local host in the browser. And now we're talking. This looks insane. Before we do anything, let's quickly clean up the folder structure to avoid issues later on. Close the project folder in Windsurf. You'll notice that the docs folder is outside the main project directory, so let's drag it inside where it belongs. The project is showing up in a way that suggests we haven't fully opened the folder in Windsurf. So to check this, let's open a new terminal since the one we have open is already running the project locally. In the new terminal, type ls. This stands for list files and shows everything in the current directory. If you see that we're outside the actual project repository, then we need to fix this. Simply drag the project folder from the sidebar into the Windsurf window. Now open a new terminal and type ls again. Here, you'll see that we're inside the correct project folder, as the files in the terminal match exactly with those in the sidebar, confirming that everything is properly set up. Let's open Cascade by pressing Ctrl L and then type this. Now let's continue building the web app. What's next to build? Then we tag the context.md file to give Cascade the necessary project details. Once we hit enter, Cascade 
will analyze the project plan and scan the current files to see what has already been built. Here we can see that the next step is adding the core functionality to our web app using DeepSeek. And since we are in write mode, Cascade will immediately start generating the code. As we follow along, we can see exactly what Cascade is doing, building the script for the prompt generator feature, creating the API endpoint to handle the generated text, and implementing both the generation and download file functionality. Let's go ahead and accept the new changes to move forward. If we check the chat interface, Cascade suggests five different features we can continue building. Let's prompt the AI to continue with number one so we stay on track. Cascade will now keep working on the DeepSeek implementation. So let's hit accept. And next we need to set up the environment file.env. This is where we store our DeepSeek API key. In Windsurf, create a new file in the root of the project and name it .env.local. This file will store our API credentials. Then, let's insert the API key template into the new file and click on the insert button in the Cascade window to automatically add the API key template. Now we need to get the DeepSeek API key. So open your browser and head to platform.deepseek.com. If you haven't signed up yet, create an account. I'll just sign up with Google since it's the easiest. After signing up, you'll land on the usage analytics page. Navigate to API keys and click create new key. Name it something relevant like brain dumper. Now we need to add this API key to Windsurf. So copy the API key and paste it inside ENV local under DeepSeek API key. DeepSeek does not require an API URL, so just remove the DeepSeek API URL line. And keep in mind, you can only see this API key once. After closing the pop-up, you will never be able to view it again. Make sure you copy and store it safely. Let's see if the prompt generator is actually working. Head back to the browser where our web app is running and type in a random idea to test it. But before clicking Generate Context File, press Ctrl Shift I to open the developer tools. Then click on the Network tab to track the API calls in real time. When you then hit Generate Context File, you should see a request being sent to DeepSeek. If the request fails, click on its name to find out why it failed. In the Headers tab, check the status code. It says 402, Payment Required. This means our DeepSeek balance is empty, and the AI won't work until we add funds. I already have another API key with balance, so I'll just use that one. Now that the API call is set up with the new balance, let's see if it works. And success! The API call went through, and if we check the Headers tab, we can see a 200 status code, which means everything is working perfectly. Now we just need to implement what happens after the API call. So let's create a new chat and ask Cascade to continue building the UI for the prompt generator flow by following the context.md file. Now Cascade is adding the web app or mobile app selection, a success screen, and making some UI improvements to make the tool even smoother. Let's then go ahead and press accept all, then head back to the browser. And there it is. Everything has been updated. The success page is now live and we can actually download the generated context file. Let's open it and take a look. This looks great. Now the next step is user authentication and database setup. So let's tell Windsurf to set up Supabase authentication and integrate the database for us. Hit accept on the installations and let's get this set up. Now that Cascade is generating the Supabase setup, it's giving us a quick to-do list to finalize the setup. First, we need to add the Supabase anonymous key and project URL to our environment file. Let's insert the template Cascade provided and head over to supabase.com. Sign up or log in to Supabase and open the dashboard. Click New Project, name it Brain Dumper, and set a strong password. Hit Create Project and wait for the database to initialize. Now we need the Anon Public Key and Project URL. In Supabase, go to Settings and API. Copy the Anon Public Key. Head back to Windsurf and replace the key. And then, let's also remove the placeholder for the URL. Copy the Project URL from Supabase and paste it back in Windsurf. Now we need to set up our database structure. Cascade has provided us with an SQL script that creates all the necessary tables. Copy the script, head to Supabase and SQL Editor. Paste the code and then press Control Enter to run it. Now let's prompt Cascade to continue as concisely as possible. Keeping prompts concise ensures the AI only writes necessary code instead of adding unnecessary clutter. Now let's type continue one more time to build the UI for the sign up and login pages. Once it's done, accept the changes and head back to the local hosted website. If we run into errors on the front end, just copy the error message into Cascade. Cascade will usually fix it by himself. But if he doesn't fix the problem, you need to give more context for when the error happens. Is it on page load, a specific button click, etc. Now that authentication is ready, let's test if everything works correctly. Navigate to slash auth in the local host. This brings up the login page, but since we don't have an account yet, click sign up instead. After signing up, Supabase automatically sends a confirmation email. I'll confirm the mail and then log in to test if the user authentication is working. Open developer tools again by pressing Control shift i Navigate to the network tab and check if the API call returns a 200 success response.
response. Login successful. Now we quickly just need to implement what happens after the user logs in. Let's ask Cascade to continue building by prompting this. Now we've successfully added authentication. Let's continue by setting up the user tracking in the database and refining the UI for the user flow. So type the prompt in Cascade and let it generate the necessary updates. Once it's done, hit accept to apply the changes. Now let's check how everything is working. If I try to log in, we'll see the account doesn't exist. So let's create a new account and confirm the verification email Superbase sends out automatically. I'll try to log in again and nice, it's working. To confirm everything is saved properly, go to Superbase and navigate to authentication. Here, we can see the newly created account, meaning authentication is working perfectly. Let's also create a new context file and check if it gets stored as well. When it's done, navigate to my ideas and there it is. We can download it again anytime. Head to Superbase and navigate to table editor. Open the app ideas table and here we can see the file we just created also is saved in the database. Perfect. Now, the app is fully set up with authentication and data tracking. But now that users can log in and track their ideas, we need to set up payment. So let's integrate Stripe. Write this in the cascade. Set up Stripe for the users to pay monthly to use the tool, accept the installation prompt, and cascade will generate all the necessary files. Once it's done, click accept to apply the changes. Open the environment file in Windsurf. Click insert to add the API placeholders. Since I don't want to expose my Stripe API keys in the video, I'll just write one, two, three. Remove the webhook key. We don't need it. Now we need a price ID. But before we can get one, we need to create a product in Stripe. Go to stripe.com, sign up, and log in. Navigate to product catalog, add a product. Name it something relevant, like brain dumper. Set the description to anything. Choose a category. Just go with the most popular one. Set it as recurring revenue and price it at $5 per month, even though we originally set $10 on the website. Save the product. Now open the product, click the three dots, and copy the price ID. Head back to Windsurf and paste it in. Set the URL to localhost for now. We also need the publishable key and secret key. Head back to Stripe. Developer, API keys. Copy both the publishable key and secret key. Paste them into Windsurf. Let's test this out by creating a web app. But the UI isn't set up yet. Prompt Cascade to generate the UI for the Stripe payment flow. Once it's done, click accept and test again. Now click subscribe now. It redirects us to Stripe's official payment page. Perfect. Now, let's push the project to GitHub to deploy it. Go to github.com and create a new repository. Name it after the project and set it to private. This is important. Click Create Repository. Now, we just need to run these six commands in Windsurf to connect our local folder to this GitHub repository. So let's copy the first command, open a new terminal, and run it. Now continue this with all the rest of the commands. Check GitHub and we'll see the readme file is pushed. But to add the entire project, let's write this. Refresh GitHub, and now, all files are uploaded. Now let's deploy the project in just a few clicks. Go to versal.com and click Start Deploying. Continue with GitHub and install the GitHub application. Import the project we just uploaded. Now head to the Overview page. Click the three dots, and then choose Settings. Navigate to Domains, and simply add the domain you want to use. If you want this video as an article, I've added it as a blog post on my website.